subscribers already. This one is not going to be as good as that list. Um, because growing up I was a much bigger fan of NBA basketball than NFL football. It was just the sport I gravitated towards. I got into the NFL later in life, and then I even took a break for a little while from the NFL from watching it, and only kind of recently got back into it again uh, in the last handful of years. So this list is not going to be as extensive, and you guys are probably going to make fun of this list. Um, but it's, it's something you guys have asked for. Um, and basically all these guys, with the exception of one, are dudes I grew up watching. And unlike other sports where I watch a ton of teams, uh, I pretty much just watch the Seahawks, except for now. Because now I do my review videos for the channel, right? So I'm watching four or five games a week during the season. But growing up, I was only watching the Seahawks. I wasn't watching other teams. So most of these guys are going to be Seahawks. Uh, just, just a fair warning to all of you. But let's get in here with number 10. And at number 10, we have Marcus Mariota. Now, this is because like Marcus Mariota is great or anything. I don't even know if he's still in the league anymore. But uh, my dad was an Oregon alum. So growing up, I've always been an Oregon fan. Like, my dad always had the Ducks games on. My dad had the Oregon flag flying outside the house. My dad would be drippy, decked out, head to toe in Oregon Ducks gear on game days, right? He had the Oregon hat, shirt, shoes, like, my dad's a huge Oregon sports fan. So growing up, I was always watching Ducks games, and I just remember those Marcus Mariota years, especially that run to the Natty. Ultimately, they end up losing to James Winston, um, and now both Marcus Mariota and James Winston have had kind of mediocre careers in the NFL. But because of the excitement and how electric those, um, those Ducks teams were, I've always rooted for Marcus Mariota. It's the same reason I'm a big Justin Herbert fan. And seeing Mariota struggle, it's like I really just want him to be able to find a spot and like stick there and do something, be a starter. But I think at this point it's probably too late. He's 30 years old. He is on the commanders now, I see that. But yeah, unfortunate how his career went. But he was drafted to the Titans. He's played for Vegas, Atlanta, Philly, and now Washington. Marcus Mariota has played 90 games in his career. He has a record of 34 and 40, so that's only 74. So most so a handful of those games he played as a backup. He has a completion rate of 62.7%. He's thrown for 15,820 yards. Mariota's averaged 7.5 yards per attempt. He's thrown 93 touchdowns and 55 interceptions. He has led 11 comebacks and 14 game-winning drives. So that's my number 10. Number 9 is Chad Johnson Ojo Cinco. Now this dude was always getting a lot of hate from sports media, especially when I was a kid. Like I saw these, it was like him and T.O. People were like always trash talking them. And now like looking back now, you're kind of like, oh, why were they really trash talking those guys? But I always loved Ocho Cinco's personality. I thought he was super funny. Like, especially now, like, seeing him now with, like, Shannon Sharp and all this other stuff, like, for me, it was less of, like, his on-field stuff, but I just loved, like, who he was, like, personality-wise, you know, he's always open, you throw the ball down there, he's always open, um, 
Yeah, but that's not to take anything away from his career, just for me. Like, I always, you know, liked, I liked the guy. And, uh, as I've said before, wide receiver is my favorite position. Probably wide receiver and, uh, corner are my favorite positions in the NFL. Whenever I do a Madden grade a player, I always am either a wide receiver or a corner. Um, but yeah, Ocho Cinco, he was drafted to the Bengals, spent nine years there. He had one season with New England. Uh, that season with New England, he lost in the Super Bowl to the New York Giants. So no rings for Johnson. Uh, Ojo, he played 166 games at 766 receptions for 11,059 yards. Averaged 14.4 yards per reception. He had 67 touchdowns. He was a six-time pro bowler and a two-time all-pro. That's my number nine. Number eight. This is probably this is the most recent player on this list, and that's DK Metcalf. He's still playing, and that's because this dude is kind of the reason I got back into watching the NFL. I was taking a break. Honestly, it was after that Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. I honestly stopped watching for a few years. I just couldn't do it. Like, I was like, man, no. Like, the vibes around the team were bad. Dudes were leaving. It just felt like there was just bad vibes around the team. And I was like, I can't, I, I just can't watch. I wasn't watching any football for years. When it was the DK Metcalf draft. And like going into the draft, I saw the dude, like, and I was already like, I liked DK as a player before the Seahawks got him. And I was like, oh, this dude's going to be a great player. He's a type of wide receiver I like, like just a big dude, runs fast. And then he fell to the Seahawks, because he, he fell quite a bit in that draft, and so I was super hype. And I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back into this, I'm going to start watching again, because we have DK. Um, so he's still on the team, he's strapped it to Seattle, but that's why he's up on this list. He's the reason I'm watching NFL again. DK has played 82 games in his career. He has 372 receptions, 5,332 yards. He averages 14.3 yards per reception. He has caught 43 touchdowns, and he is a two-time Pro Bowler. I just love some of those, like that, the one DK clip I always think of is when he ch when he's chasing down the dude on the interception, like tackles him at like the one yard line, just chasing after him like he's the Terminator. But DK Metcalf, when he's open and he has field in front of him, like those plays are always just the best because dude is just super fast, super athletic. And it's a shame that he only, you know, he's kind of... He had tail end of his career, Russ, his first year. And then he's had Geno Smith, the last two. And coming into this year, he's going to have Geno Smith and Sam Howell. So I was like, man, we got to get like a good quarterback in with DK. I'm worried he's going to want to go to a different team. I really hope he, he stays on the squad. We can extend him, but I'll root for him no matter where he goes, honestly. Number seven is Eli Manning. Eli Manning, I've always loved Eli because, like, you look at Peyton and, like, Peyton has all the duels, right? He has the great arm. He's super smart. Like, Peyton is maybe the smartest quarterback of all time. Like, at reading the game, reading the defense, setting up the offense as audibles. You know, Peyton, if you were gonna, like, if you, like, asked a bunch of NFL head coaches to, like, design a quarterback, they would create Peyton Manning. But Eli, you know, not to say he was, didn't have a good arm, but Eli, he kind of looks a little bit slubby. He's kind of like Adam Sandler when Adam Sandler does romantic comedies, right? That's what Eli Manning reminds me of. Or Eli Manning is like Kevin James in a romantic comedies. And, like, Good Luck Chuck or Hitch or something. That's Eli Manning. He looks like a dude who should be watching the game, not playing the game. But he has two Super Bowl rings, and he's just an absolute killer. 
He was drafted to the Chargers, but he refused to play for them, so he gets traded to the Giants for Phillip Rivers. And at first, that looks like a good trade for the Chargers. I remember Chargers fans were talking so much trash, because his rookie season, Eli Manning, was like really bad. He was throwing a ton of interceptions his rookie season. He like was getting rattled pretty bad. And I remember like after that whole thing with him not wanting to play for San Diego, the fans and they hated Eli. Eli played 236 games, and this is the crazy thing, he has a record of 117 wins, 117 losses. That is so funny to me. Completion rate of 60.3% for his career, through for 57,023 yards, averaging 7 yards per attempt through for 366 touchdowns, 244 interceptions. He's responsible for 27 comeback wins and 37 game-winning drives. Eli Manning is a two-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Super Bowl MVP, four-time Pro Bowler, and the 2016 Walter Payton Man of the Year. Eli Manning. Number six. I was considering putting this dude at five. My five and six here, honestly, I struggled with who goes where. But I ended up putting him at six. Uh, but number six is Randy Moss. My favorite thing about Randy Moss, if you go watch a Randy Moss highlight reel, it doesn't even look like that quarterback is throwing the ball to Randy. The quarterback is just throwing the ball, and Randy just goes up and gets it like a dude is a ball magnet. I think seeing Randy is probably what made me, like, fall in love with the wide receiver position. Because dude was just, like, I don't, I literally can't explain it. Like, the ball would just, he could, he could be thrown into triple coverage. Randy ends up with the ball every time. Like... Also, fun fact, Randy was born in a town called Randy. Uh, he was drafted to the Minnesota Vikings. He played for Oakland. He played for New England. And he played for Tennessee and San Francisco. Randy Moss played 218 games. He had 982 receptions for 15,000. 292 yards, averaging 15.6 yards per reception. That's like one and a half first downs per reception. Randy has 156 touchdowns. He's a Hall of Famer, six time Pro Bowler, four time All Pro. He's on the All 2000s team. He was the 1998 Offensive Rookie of the Year, and he was the 2007 Comeback Player of the Year. Fortunately, Randy Moss, he played in two Super Bowls, but he was unable to win either one. But one of the best wide receivers of all time, some people call him the best wide receiver of all time, Randy Moss. Number five, Earl Thomas. I picked Earl because, you know, Seahawks allegiance. I gotta go there. He was part of the Legion of Boom. And you know what they say? <laughs> the Earth's surface, 72% of it is covered by water. The rest is covered by Earl Thomas. Dude was a sideline to sideline player. He just locked down the field like he wasn't the flashiest dude in the Legion of Boom you know Sherman what Sherman seemed like was kind of the big name the big like he was the not the guy but like he was the big talker right he was he talked a lot he got a lot of the heat on him with Sherman and then Cam Chancellor Cam Chancellor laid out huge hits. He was blowing dudes up. 
or in my opinion, Earl Thomas was like the guy who made it all work. He was the glue. And when the relationship between Earl and the front office broke down, that was the beginning of the end. And I know Earl has dealt with some off-field stuff in recent years, and that's pretty sad to see, but uh, when he was when he was a Legion of Boom, he was electric. Drafted to Seattle, he spent one season in Baltimore. Earl Thomas played 140 games. He had 30 interceptions, got 455 yards, two touchdowns, not bad. 713 tackles. He's a one-time Super Bowl champion, a seven-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro and was named to the All-2010s team. Number four, who else but Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. You know, we're not going to get into it now, but you know, everyone's like, you should have just given Marshawn the ball. I've come to peace with it. I know why they didn't give Marshawn the ball. It's been explained. Some people don't like to accept the explanation of why they passed. I get it. I don't blame the decision. It was an all-time great read by Malcolm Butler. Marshawn Lynch probably could have got you the touchdown, though. He was drafted to Buffalo, but all they had there was Applebee's. Came to Seattle, was in Oakland for a bit, and then spent one season in Seattle. I think he got hurt pretty early on. And that was at the end of his career, but I mean, the Beast Quake is an iconic, just one of the most iconic NFL plays of all time, one of the most iconic rushing plays of all time, just breaking tackles, powering ahead. I love that sort of just power back, running back. That's, that's why I like Derrick Henry so much. It's just like a bulldozer, full speed ahead. Human wrecking ball vibes. Marshawn Lynch played 149 games. He had 2,453 rushes. He got 10,413 yards, averaged 4.2 yards per attempt. He had 85 touchdowns. He's a one-time Super Bowl champion. Five-time Pro Bowler. One-time All-Pro. And he was named to the All 2010s team. Now we get into the top three. My three favorite players of all time. We come to the bronze medal. Ladanian Tomlinson. Ladanian Tomlinson, if you grew up around the years I grew up, this dude, everybody was talking about this dude. He was like, like, think of what Christian McCaffrey is doing right now. That's what LaDainian Tomlinson was doing back then. And it's such a shame that he never got a real shot at a Super Bowl. He was in San Diego most of his career. Spent two seasons with the Jets. But this dude was just electric watching him play. He could run. He could catch. I think he even threw a touchdown or two from time to time. Played 170 games, 3,174 rushes for 13,684 yards. Averaged 4.3 yards per attempt. Had 145 touchdowns. He's in the Hall of Fame. Five-time Pro Bowler. Three-time All-Pro. 2006 MVP. All-2000s team. 2006 Offensive Player of the Year. 2006 Burt Bell Award and the 2006 Walter Payton Man of the Year Award LaDainian Tomlinson my number three favorite player of all time mm -hmm. and number two you're probably expecting to see this guy here because I've said before who my favorite is so some of you might know who number one is and I've mentioned if any of you guys probably knew this guy had to be on the list it's like, well, he hasn't been on the list yet, so he has to be a two. And some of you, I want you to be honest right now. Tell me in the comments 
if you guessed this guy at number two, if you've watched my videos in the past, I think you might have been able to guess him here. You either loved him or you hated him. And I loved the hell out of this guy, Richard Sherman. You try him with a sorry receiver like Crabtree. Richard Sherman. Like I said, Earl Thomas was the glue guy in the Legion of Boom, in my opinion. But Richard Sherman was the most electric dude. Watching him that... What was it that, um... Who was it for the Cowboys? Oh, it's right on... It's right on the tip of my tongue. I want to say it was Terrell Owens, but I don't think it was. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy that I can't think of his name, but it was a Cowboys of Des Bryant. Des Bryant. He's going into the end zone. It looks like a sure thing touchdown. He's on the one-yard line. Richard Sherman just, boom, throws the shoulder into him. Des Bryant fumbles. And... Richard was so smart at reading the offense. He would sit there and he could like see, like he had a sixth sense of when the quarterback was about to throw, but like before he actually threw. And he would like leave his man and jump the route and just get the ball. Like watching Richard Sherman just ball hawk quarterbacks is was one of my like God, I love that era. So good. He was drafted to Seattle. He played in San Francisco for a little bit. Uh, played in Tampa Bay with Tom Brady before retiring, and now he does some punditry and different stuff. Um, I know some Seattle fans, he, he said some things over the years, Richard Sherman, like, you know, sometimes he, like, is really all about Seattle, and sometimes he's like, no, I'm actually a San Francisco guy. But, like, you know, I can... I'm always going to love him for what he did during his time in Seattle. Played 144 games. He had 37 interceptions. Got 478 yards. Three touchdowns. 495 career tackles. What's crazy, he has 495 tackles. 385 of those are solo tackles. He's a one-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, a member of the All-2010s team. And my number one favorite player of all time. I've said it a couple times in other videos. Dan Marino. And I have a story about this and part of the reason why. So growing up, um, I'm the youngest of three brothers. And my older brothers are a decent bit older than me when I was born. They were already, like, getting close to being teenagers, right? They were around that preteen age. So we, we had different interests. We never really hung out much growing up. Um, but my brothers collected football cards. So I would always, like, take... They'd let me play with them and stuff. So I would always take the football cards and I would, like, make lineups. Like, I'd build a team using the different player cards. It was like Madden Ultimate Team before Madden Ultimate Team existed. And I don't know why. I don't know why Child, Daft Rain Cloud, decided to do this. But I always took the Dan Marino card as my quarterback. Every other spot, I would mix it up. I would put different people in different spots. But for some reason, I always took the Dan Marino card at QB. I don't know if it was because I liked the Dolphins logo. I don't know if it was the card was cool. But I just always did. As I always grew up, you know, Dan Marino, Dan Marino. I, got, I have a Dan Marino jersey. It's the only football jersey I have that is not a Seahawks jersey. And it's the reason why the Miami Dolphins are my favorite East Coast team in the NFL. One of the Miami Dolphins are my second favorite team in the NFL because of Dan Marino. Uh, he was drafted to Miami, he played his whole career there due to an absolute cannon of an arm with a super quick release, just got the ball out so fast. 
just an amazing quarterback. It's a, it's a shame they never won a Super Bowl. Because I feel like most quarterback ranking lists have him lower than where he deserves to be. And if he had just had one Super Bowl ring, I think people would rate him more highly. Just one is all he needed. Um, but unfortunately, he couldn't get it. Um, maybe that's part of why I like him so much. He just fell a little bit short. Very relatable story, right? Um, Dan played 242 games. He has a record of 147 and 93. 147 wins, 93 losses. Career completion rate of 59.4%. He threw for 61,000. 361 yards Average 7.3 yards per attempt And I swear I'm not lying when I said When I say this He threw for 420 touchdowns 252 interceptions And if you look at Go look at Dan Marino's stats And compare them to the QBs Of his era He stands out He was head and shoulders above that back Oh, one of the best to ever do it. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback, responsible for 33 comeback wins. He had 47 game-winning drives. He's a nine-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, 1984 MVP, 1984 Offensive Player of the Year, 1984 Burt Bell Award, 1994 Comeback Player of the Year, 1993 Rookie of the Year. He is a two-time UPI Offensive Player of the Year. And he was the 1998 Walter Payton Man of the Year. My favorite NFL player of all time, Dan Marino. So, there you have it. My ten favorite players of all time. Let me know what you think of this list. Like I said, I know it's not the best. But, it is mine. Let me know who on this list you like or dislike. If any of these people would make your list of your 10 favorite players of all time. But if you like the video, thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. And until next time, guys.